Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. I haven't done one of these. Well, I say that. It's not that I haven't done one in a while. We just haven't released an episode for a couple of weeks. So this is the first one back out. Dab was away. He was skiing. Uh, and this was actually the skiing trip where he cancelled on me. So, because I don't know if you if you listen regularly to all the episodes, you'll know there was an episode where I said to him, basically, I feel like we don't spend much time together anymore as a father and son. And I didn't expect that to go very well. And he was like, son, you're absolutely right. I completely agree with you. I'm sorry. We'll start to do that. And tell you what, to make this okay, I'll come to Manchester soon. I was like, all right, good. Here's some dates. Come to Manchester then. All good. And then he cancelled on me to go skiing with with his girlfriend, right? So he literally did the thing he promised not to do. But it's okay. I'm all right about it now. I was quite upset at the time. Um, but I'm okay now. Um, BA yeah, was skiing on that trip this weekend. So that's what was going on. And that's why we didn't do an episode. But we're back. We're going to really be talking about some interesting stuff. And I've got some things I'd like to talk about. So uh, for, for a start, a little tip. So I, I struggle to like appreciate uh, what what I'm doing. And I, I, I'm always looking ahead, always looking forward. A lot of the time, I struggle to look back and go, "Fuck, man, you've come, you've come so far," and like appreciate how well I've done and be kind of be proud of proud of myself. I guess that's what what I've, what what, what I realized right is if you take edibles, you feel them. Like I took edibles the other day. And it makes the most menial tasks, the most basic day-to-day tasks, seem like an amazing feat. Like, I did edibles the other day, walked up the stairs, and I just thought, God, I really appreciate how far I've come. That was amazing. I've just, I was down there. Now I'm up here. That was amazing. And then after that, I made toast. And I was like, fuck, I'm like a five-star Michelin chef. But the thing is, the toast was disgusting. It was burnt to fuck. It was awful. I would say if you struggle to, you know, appreciate yourself and you struggle to really look back and go, oh, man, you're really doing well. Because always looking forward is good and it gets you far, but sometimes it can, you know, hold you back in terms of happiness, I guess. Um, but me and my dad, are going to be talking about the, um, basically the, the the course we were on, the pickup course we went on. I very, I very much remember him taking me on the course because I remember when I was a little kid, but basically when my parents got divorced, my dad got really into self-development I'm really into self-help. Like that was his version of a midlife crisis, right? But don't be you're very much having a midlife crisis now. He's a 25-year-old fucking girl, so he just did it a bit later, right? But straight after they got divorced, he um he got really into self-development and self-help, which I thought was weird to get into that. Because most men, when they get divorced, like get a younger girlfriend and a motorbike, whereas he went on a Tony Robbins course with a younger girl. Yeah, he went he went on this course, right? And I remember when when he started getting into self development, he was he was he was trying to get me into it. He'd always be like, "Oh, you should come on this course. You should come on this course," which is nice. But the difficult thing is when you every time you see someone, they're telling you how you should go on this self development course. It starts to make you feel a bit shit about yourself. Like, why do I need to go on this self development course? I'm absolutely fine. Am I not? Maybe you don't think I'm fine. Um, and then he was like, "Dom, I've got." And then one day he came in, he's like, "Dom, I've got this course for you. We're going to go on it. It's going to make you independent. It's going to make you financially stable. It's going to completely turn your life around." And I was like, "Dad, I'm 11 years old. I don't need to be financially pen. I don't need to be independent or financially stable. How can I turn my life around? I'm 11 years old. I haven't even hit puberty yet. Give me a fucking chance. Now give me my now give me my pocket money and stop trying to sell me on these courses." But but then I was I wasn't very good. Then when I was at eighteen, uh, I'd never been very good with uh, with women, right? Never very confident. And now I'm okay. Well, I'm saying I'm a bit arrogant, isn't it? But I was never that confident with women. And then when I was eighteen, he he, he kind of noticed that. Well, but one day I tried to have a chat with him. I said, "Dad, I'm not very confident with women. Sometimes I feel quite nervous around women." And I just wanted to kind of have a heart to heart chat with my dad, right? And then he tried to sell me on a fucking course. He goes, "Dom." I have got the course for you. Yeah, we're going to go on this course. It's a course. And on this course, they're going to teach you how to pick up women. Pick up. And I, I, was, like, I was 18. I didn't know what pick up, a course to pick up women. I didn't even know what that meant, really. Genuinely, he said, we're going to go on a course to pick up women. And I genuinely thought, a course to pick up women. Hang on a minute. How heavy are these women? What's <laughs> 
And how much technique is it? It was an eight-hour course. How much technique is involved to picking up these women? I mean, what the fuck? Uh, wouldn't a gym membership be better? Or a forklift? Something like that. Would that not be better? <laughs> but we're going to get into the course um, and what happened in the course. So strap in, everyone. Join the Patreon. Uh, subscribe. Do all the business. See you soon. Hey, here we go. Another episode. What's going Welcome on? Welcome back. Well, I've got big news actually. Got a um got a job. What being a dickhead? Hey. <laughs> there you Professional go. tosser. One nil. Um <laughs> I've got just one day a week at a golf club, which is what I wanted. Well. Get this what? as a as a ranger. As a ranger, what so, sort of so picking balls up and no, stuff no, like. no. I just drive the buggy around all day asking people if they've paid. Oh, checking up on people that's amazing. So there's no, there's, there's no one sort of, there's no one sort of sneaked in under the fence. Yeah, that's amazing, Excellent. isn't it? That is, that's a really good job. Wow, how what does that pay? Minimum wage, obviously. That's all right. Driving a buggy all day, it's pretty just good. one day a week, but that's okay for me. So, I'm not going to, it's what? not going to be life changing in terms of money at all. That's all right. It's a That's start, right. isn't it? Um, so what, what do you get to, to, pick, to, to pick your days, or is it a specific? Well, I'll day? tell you what it is. They said there's two shift times. One of them is six a.m. till twelve p.m. Yeah, and the other one is three p.m. till nine p.m. The thing is, I went there, and obviously my CV said I was this comic, and the guy was like. Fucking asking me loads. He loved comedy, and he was, he was like, "Wow, that's amazing that you do the comedy." And then he was like, "So, what are you wanting to do? How many hours?" And I said, "Well, I'll be honest. I just want to make. Sh- I want to do like 50, 10 hours a week just to make sure it does." And they were like, "Yeah, just." And they were like, "Yeah, so it doesn't get in the way of stand up." Well, and they were like, so "Oh, and like if you, you're, the, you're the perfect interviewer." Yeah, and they're like, "If you ever need to cancel a shift, just let us know, and we can change because you get a gig. Just let us know, and we'll change it." So, Brilliant. They said they don't want to get in the way of it, but they want me to enjoy working there. Um, mm. The 6 a.m.s, I'm not sure about that, though. But I guess I could do a 6 a.m. If I get in late, say I get in at like 12, I could sleep for five hours, do the shift, come back home, sleep, then go out and do gigs in the evening. That's okay. It's quite nice getting up early sun- every so often. In the summer, it will be. Drive yeah. around a buggy. Brilliant. But I've been playing a lot of golf recently. I'm enjoying golf. Well. So do you get do you get to like have a baton or a gun or something like that? No, I just get a buggy. What 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 is weird about the course though is it's not like a traditional golf course. It's like a recreational. Like it's a good course, but you could wear jeans if you wanted to. Are you gonna are you gonna get yourself one of those security jackets and fill it up with torches and and stuff yeah. like that and look and with security on the back and stuff like that? Well, I will tell you what, I'm and, gonna do. And, I'm gonna and, drive and go, up, go and get to go and get say gents. Okay, have you paid to be here? Can I I'll see tell you what, ID, please? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Remember my, my, the ranger at my old course? He used to always catch me for doing naughty stuff, didn't he? He had to come to yeah. a meeting once. Yeah, um, yeah. That meeting was quite funny, actually, because they brought me in to, like, have a go at me. And they were like, oh, we really like you. You know, you're one of the future stars of the golf club, but you need to stop doing this. And then you you left the meeting, like, saying you were proud of me because they were really saying nice things. Yeah, they said great things about you. Yeah, like, they came in to give me an ass kicking. You were like, yeah, keep doing that. Yeah. Um but yeah, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive I'm gonna keep a golf club and then what I'll do is when it's quiet, I'll just play a few holes. Fantastic. What a brilliant idea. I reckon. Yeah. Um and I get free membership as well, obviously. And also if you if the hole you want to play and someone else is on it, you need to say, Well, sorry, gents, you, 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 you've <laughs> yeah, been yeah. here long enough, so you need to move on now. Yeah. Skip a hole. Mm. And so so as well. Yeah. You can um, try and make your yogurt. Probably Is it shouldn't. nice? Probably shouldn't do this. Probably not. Won't sound very good on the mic. And eating on, on we're doing, I was doing a podcast before, but I it's a podcast about eating. Yeah. Well, I forgot what I was going to Oh, they, they were like, oh, yeah, what we're going to start doing is you. we're going to give you like a load of drinks and you go and sell them on the course. It's a good oh, idea. yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. yeah. I thought maybe I should just not do that and buy the drink myself and sell them on the course. Even better. 
<laughs> you just go to the cash and carry or Tesco's and just slip a few in yourself. Because remember when I used to sell sweets at school? That was amazing. I made yeah. loads of money. You did. I made like thirty pound profit a day. Yeah, I mean, selling. I made more money your, than I make now. Selling your own alcohol would, would definitely not guarantee you losing your job. Definitely not. I, in fact, they probably encourage that. Well, I mean, if they gave me stuff to sell and I and they and then I came back and I was oh, really dry today, man. But I'd sold like hundred pound worth of my own stuff. I don't think they'd be too pleased. I, I'm not sure that's that's probably a disciplinary. I would say. Call me they, stupid. They'd probably be I, like, ah, oh, you need comedy. You, so funny. You cheeky, you cheeky, <laughs> you cheeky little shit. You'll be putting that yeah. in your act, won't you? <laughs> Don't do that again. Yeah, he just fucking loved it. He loved comedy. He asked me to do a show at the thing, and I was like, well, can I just, you know, start work here first? You should. But I will. Um, anyway, so, so what's happening? Is, uh, the next topic I'm going to take on on stage. So I've been doing my, um, shows this oh i've been doing my work in progress shows this week for doing the i'm doing an hour aren't i in edinburgh you're doing an hour wow okay that's a long so time been, isn't it I've what's, been the doing... longest, what's the longest you've done so far well i did 45 minutes the other day so i'm not sure if i'm gonna do an hour or 45 minutes yet mm, um that's a long time i'll do 45 minutes well i don't know i'm gonna decide and the other thing about this job before we move on actually so i rung mum and i was like mum got this job one day a week, maybe two days a week. Sometimes, you know, I just got and I just said to, but I just got to make sure it doesn't get in the way of my stand up. Because I think if, yeah, because I think I moved here to do stand up, and that's what I want to do. And mm -hmm. then if I get a job that gets in the way, that'd be mental. And she was, yeah, but you might have to let stand up take a back seat for a minute. You don't want to piss these people off. You got to take it seriously. I was like, oh, for God's sake! Wow. The thing is, even if it is two days a week, that's not going to get in the way, is it? Can you imagine, do you know who Andrew Lloyd Webber is? No. Okay, Andrew Lloyd Webber is is a billionaire, and he um he wrote Cats, Phantom of the Opera, uh, that uh, thing that James Corden was in, Cats. Yeah, but he's hmm. but he's obviously he's made some incredibly successful musicals. Because that was shit, and wasn't it? Cats. It, 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 the, the original stage one was pretty good, but it was good at the time. But I think the Cats. Film was rubbish, yeah. But the point is, is he had he came. Julian Lloyd Webber was also a world class celloist, I think, and the whole family are just brilliant musicians. Now, Andrew Lloyd Webber was a billionaire, okay, as a consequence of of going into the arts. Can you imagine when he was younger, his parents said, "Andrew, mate, okay, you know, yeah, they obviously did. Playing, playing the instrument, piano, is a fantastic idea, but why don't you get yourself a, yourself a sensible job like a doctor?" They they did. They, he came from a musical family, so he he would have been encouraged to go into into the arts. Mm. It's a job. Like I said to you before, you probably find there's probably now uh, the festivals are probably a bigger industry than well certainly I, I would say festivals are probably a bigger industry in this country than Christ car manufacturing without a doubt. Mm. So it's not it's no. I think it's that's an old fashioned view. You might need to let that take a back seat because it's not a real job you know nor is nor is playing the piano or dancing well of course they're real jobs well i've got to make sure it doesn't get in the way but my thought is what i'll do is i'll do like shifts on like monday or tuesdays when i wouldn't do a gig anyway and then that's because obviously i have to do the three till 9 p.m i couldn't really gig that night um unless i was on last so i'll just make sure i um do it on days of the week that i don't normally gig monday tuesdays Imagine J.K. Rawlings family saying, sweetheart, you know, yeah, they probably this, did though. This, this, this book malarkey is brilliant, but where is it going to go? Yeah, but I, I understand. Mean, shouldn't, shouldn't you get yourself a job in Tesco's? I understand why out. she's saying it though, because I'm finishing uni and she knows I need a bit of extra money. So she's there like, well, better take that job seriously. And I will, but I'll just make sure it doesn't get, I need to prioritise my. What, two shifts minimum wage? I mean, mate, it's not, it's <laughs> not, Christ, it's not exactly an airline pilot, is it? But it's oh. fun, isn't it? Fun. Yeah, it's fine. Sounds fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I should be able to do that without it getting in the way, shouldn't I? Do you know what I mean? Definitely. Why I just have to you? be a bit more busy. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Because currently, I, what I do now is I wake up about nine thirty, do some work in the morning, go to the gym, come back, cook, and then I just wait to leave in the evening. Yeah, but you suffer with Parkinson's law, don't you? What do you mean? Well, but there's a guy called Professor Parkinson. Okay, it's got nothing to do actually with the disease of Parkinson, but this guy was—he was kind of—he um, was a productivity expert, 
yeah. and he worked out that if you said to someone for example i don't know if you said all right you've got a day to clean the kitchen uh they would take a day if you said to them you got three hours to clean the kitchen they'd take three hours if you said you got two days to clean the kitchen they'd take two days and his philosophy was or it wasn't a philosophy it's a science he worked out that people would fit in they would stretch that job out okay for the time they were given or mm. even do it quicker i mean obviously that that doesn't work with i want you to build a house in a day that's never going to happen but if you say to somebody you're two years to build a house they'd take two years probably go a little bit over if you say to them you got a year they do it in a year and that's parkinson's law and, and currently what you're doing is you're fitting uh your your workload into an awful long period where i like doing stuff little and often that's fine but if you had if you had more to do you would just fit that in, in the time that you the time allocated to you yeah it's true well i can write jokes on the course i reckon yeah I reckon well, no, it's not just writing jokes it's seeing jokes isn't it i mean and surely everywhere you go you must see material you must well it's me i'm sure i'll meet a lot of racist men on the golf course probably yeah and a lot of alcoholics yeah a probably a lot of alcoholics yeah, yeah. And maybe some nice blokes too. Well, so I'm sure maybe some, some non racist nice people. people. Yeah, I'm sure. That, I'm not sure. I, I'm not <laughs> sure the golf course is a stereotypical of alcoholics and, and, and racists. I don't well, what I think is funny is they call golf gay, but it's very, there's a lot of homophobic men in golf. Are there? You know I mean, yeah, like, yeah, it's, you know, old the thing is, I don't even think they're homophobic. They're just old men that aren't used to well, the just world. Come from a different era. Now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, yeah, I don't think they would. Um, I don't think we should get into this. No. Right, should, should we move it's, on? It's not an easy topic, isn't it? Um, yeah, so I wanted to talk no. about the pickup course that we went on, which we've spoken about previously. But the next topic I want to talk about on stage in my act in this show, which I'm doing one in Somerset on the 4th of July. So uh -huh. an hour. So that'd be fun. That's Independence Day, isn't it? I don't know. But hopefully, America, an hour. American Independence Day, I think. Could you hear that? No. I just farted, so to you, it oh, just nice. looked like I was playing a weird thing. Um, yes, I'm doing that in Somerset, so hopefully some people come along. Got a bit of an audience there, I think. Um, oh, one more thing. So I put a cl couple of clips out of me and you doing this, right? And it was the one about um, Thailand. Yeah. With you and the mic and the pool on the on the thing, the mm -hmm. locking them out. And then people said, oh, I watched that clip. And I oh, yeah, what, what did you think? And they went, well, it's interesting to see your dad because it explains, seeing your dad talk explains why you are the way you are. <laughs> uh, what? Because you, when you say the clip, it was when we were filmed. You filmed it. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, they hadn't seen me before, so they had, couldn't put a voice to a face. Well, I think it was just what you were talking, because the, the clips I'd put out were, they could see you. It was like this uh -huh. before. So. Right. But maybe that person had never watched one before. Maybe that was okay. the first one they saw. And they said it explains why you are the way you are. Okay. And I kept trying to ask them, what, do you, what does that mean? And they What does not mean? They wouldn't they expand. They wouldn't embellish. Okay. I guess because you meet me sometimes and you think, thing is now everyone thinks I'm autistic. Uh-huh. So I get a pass. Yeah. And I can be a bit rude and a bit blunt. And people go, it's just autistic. It's all right. All right. But before I was always a bit of a dick. Yeah. I'm a bit blunt, I guess. But then yeah. people see you and they're like, oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, uh, no other option. He's turned out all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love to see. Um, anyway, so the pickup call, I want to talk about it. But I remember where it's a topic that has a lot of controversy around it. So I haven't actually done it on stage yet. I'm right. just working on it because what I don't want to do is take it on stage with like one minute of stuff. Because talking about it for one minute would be weird. And then moving yeah. on. So I'm going to make sure I get enough stuff until yeah. I take it on. But I've been asking a few fellow comics about it. And a few of them just think it's mad. A few of them, like Deliso, the guy who did the tour off, he says, you've got to talk about that. And then yeah. another guy is like, man, you've you've got to be careful because people are going to hate you for talking about that because you've done that, because the topic around it, because they see it as... Misogyny. That they see it as misogyny. And I said that there is a big part. So like Sasha, the guy who like... I listen to his, you know the talks we used to listen to. Yeah. I listened to his the other day and he does say some terrible things. Like he says, like, don't approach 
like ugly women because they're ugly and everyone speaks to the ugly woman and just keeps saying stuff like this and calls mm-hmm. him fat and that. So he says some awful things. So there is a big part of it where it is misogynistic and, and bad towards. I think mean, there's a big part of it where the men, the coaches and the men doing it, see women as just a challenge. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They just want to sleep yeah. with as many women as they can. It's a, yeah. Instead of people, they're a challenge. So that's bad, obviously. But. On the other hand, there was men on that course that we went on, the boot camp, where they had probably just broken up with their wives, never been with another woman before, been with their wife for 30 years, didn't know how to speak to another woman. So this got them out of their shell. And even not women, people. Well, I think that one really interesting one thing and um, that you should probably mention, and I guess to me, one of the most well, what are attractive... You uh, I Why am. You I am. I am. Oh. I'm going to. If you let me finish, mm. one of the most attractive parts of that particular course is it actually wasn't run by a man. Well, it was, but it wasn't. It wasn't the 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 person who set up the course wasn't a man. It was a woman. And mm. the reason the reason we went on it is because I actually read her book first of all, and I I I was far more interested because I've I've read I've listened to David D'Angelo and people like that and a lot of ma- other male. Uh, Pick up artists, but to hey, me, hang on, let me like, just stop. Let me stop you there. Because what I think is interesting about that is, yeah, Kezia Noble, the woman who ran the course, was a woman, but I felt she was. Mm, well, she, she, was like a, she was more. She was, a, she was she more was of a man. As you could get. Yeah, I mean, well, she like so... for example, right? So, so let me just. Remember what you were going to say, but so they were they wrote they they, they wrote the report on us, didn't they? Mm. Which maybe we'll, we'll dissect properly in another episode. But it says here, Dominic, nineteen. I was nineteen at the time. Uh, relationship history. This is what she. I didn't say this, right? Mm. She wrote this. Relationship history. Slept with lots of women, but all have been dogs. <laughs> So that's what she's written. So well, if we're talking about works. feminism, I don't think she's on the fucking top no, of the she, she was very alpha. However, yeah. it was a course that was run by a woman. It was, who, yeah. And the book was written by a woman, and it, it wasn't... And I think, again, her her basic, I mean, parking money, her basic ethos or motivation behind it was, as you say, it was to actually... It was to kind of try and help i think there there are two demographics there one demographic is as you say it's a man who's been married for 20 30 years uh i don't know met his sweetheart at school or in college or work uh kind of fell into that and has never ever had to go out in 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 the world okay and obviously potentially find another partner another another girlfriend and all we all we were confronted with or all we have been confronted with over the last God, 10, 15 years, probably 15 years, is dating apps and Tinder and plenty of fish. And the problem is there, as you and I both know, it's both men and women are hugely guilty of this. When they post their picture or put their picture up, it's 10 years old or 15 years old. And when you meet that person, I've never met a single person on a dating site or dating app, and I've met a few, that ever is a representation of the picture ever mm. Mm. and and that's that so so the uh, the alternative is you're on dating apps and ultimately you know probably both parties are disappointed because both parties probably filter or put the best pictures their best foot forward whereas obviously when you go and approach someone that's what you're seeing both ways you know that that is a person you're potentially you that's this is who you are it's not all look here's a photo and let's meet next week or something like that and and the dating apps the chat okay you know chat going back and forth and there's no guarantee that you meet there's no guarantee that even if you meet that you like them or they're like you it's a very cumbersome lengthy process so approaching people directly is a far more even though it's quite scary it's a far more um sharp instrument a dating app's a blunt instrument. So Did I think not... her, motiv- her, her motivation, sorry to talk about her motivation was to help the sort of either men who just are cripplingly insecure and shy, uh, who are younger, or the men who are, as you say, coming out of relationships, and they've got no idea what to do. Did you not think there is a lot of negatives 
huge, to it, though. Huge, huge. But, but what I, would I you say they, they, they are? Well, I'd, I'd say I'd, the, the negativity is, again, is... So, like, if you is, were a woman, if you were, say, all right, let's say, for example, you're you're a woman, right? Yeah. And you walk around that, watch it, we, we're doing it. Yeah. You're a woman, you're watching. Yeah. What would you say are the well, I negative think, I things think from a woman's from, point of view? I think in that respect, obviously, they're going to find that super cynical and think um, it's what's these, these men who are kind of training to go and approach women directly. However, if you asked, I mean, I've, I've asked a lot of women women this, and, and again, me, my analogy or bar would be, so for example, if it was, James Bond, or you know, or for example, I don't know, Will Smith. Let's take what who Will Smith in that. What was that that film? He Hitch, was, Margot, yeah, Hitch. No, Margot Robbie. Focus. Bond, Margot Robbie. Hmm? Focus. Focus. Yeah. So you take Will Smith and Focus, or Daniel Craig and James Bond. I mean, these guys are. They are. They've. They're kind of. They're framed to be the most attractive men almost on the planet. Not just because of what they look like, but because of how they conduct themselves with their confidence. And neither of them would have been on Tinder. Neither of them would have gone plenty of fish. What they both would have done is directly gone up to a woman, sat next to her. You know, can I join you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And ultimately, they would have looked to use a direct approach to form a relationship. They never would have gone with a dating app. That's that's to a large extent to me. That's sort of insecurity, and you're masking yourself, and you're hiding behind something else. And if you ask the majority of women, which as I say I have, they would far rather be approached by, an, by a confident man rather than you know pestered by well an insecure man or pestered by fifty, sixty, a hundred blokes on dating apps. I mean, bear in mind when you go on a dating app like Tinder. You might get twenty matches, ten matches. A woman's going to get hundreds, absolutely mm. hundreds. And the demographic on dating apps too is probably eight men to two women. So again, it's it's a completely unfair, uh, it's completely distorted in the woman's favour. Whereas obviously, if a man sees a woman in a hotel, bus, pub, club, uh, anywhere. And has a confidence to go up to her and say, hey, you know, so starts chatting to her, starts in rapport, and then says, should we get a coffee? What is wrong with that? Yeah. I mean, from that point of it, the man negative, the anxious kind of man, because there's not many people my age going on, I don't think, like no. when I was 19, especially not. No. Maybe the boot camp, but even my age now, 24, I wouldn't say. Very few who you're. I'd be interested how that's doing now, actually. If people are still going on it, I mean, the course I looked, I was looking it up to for material, and the course is still going. So, and they had it in she like must... Vegas and that as well. Well, she must still be doing well. I thought there's, there's, there's still the the problem is, is you know yourself, it's a lot of boys have been mothered and overmothered, uh, and they haven't been brought up. And, and because I think too, again, I'm digressing, but this is again factual, because there are so many split marriages, and what's like the percentage of marriages that fail now in divorces? That's forty eight percent. So you got half the population of boys who've been brought up by their mothers, and they don't have a male role model in their life, or they do on a very on a very sort of weekend or sparing basis. So those boys aren't. That, I mean, yeah, they get their mother's perspective about be a nice young man, you know, be polite, do this, do that, help at home, but they're not being brought up to be men. Mm. Yeah. So to a large extent, I mean, I'm sure I'll be shot down by this, okay, but to a large extent, most young men are being brought up to be pussies. They're not, and that, that's his, and the problem is, if you take the 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 classic misogynist, like who's that guy, who's Andrew Tate? Tate, Tate, Tate yeah. He's always being shot down. For saying, but but men need to be men, but everyone, all the feminists come back, come comes come back. At, he's they don't look at the relevant stuff he's saying. I mean, some of it's complete shit, I'm sure, but they don't say actually what he's saying there is right, but what he's saying there is wrong. It's look, there's wrong. positive stuff to what Andrew Tate talks about stuff that makes sense and is positive, but then also obviously the flip side. 
And a lot of it, like he says, I think it's just to be controversial and build an audience, sure. which he's done very well. But I watched a documentary about him on Channel 4, and there was a bit where he had a machete. He sleeps with a machete next to his bed, right? And he said, like, why do you, someone said, people say, ask, ask me, why do you sleep with a machete next to your bed? He's like, why wouldn't you? You know, I've got to make sure I'm, I've got a weapon. And then the person said, yeah, but what if you cheat on a woman and she's in bed with you and she tries to kill you at night? And he's like, what's she going to do, this weak bitch? I'm going to take her face and I'm going to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he says that. Like you say, it's been controversial. But the other person to look at is Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson, you know, again, an eminent social psycholo psycho psychologist. And he says the same about men. He says, he says the problem is the vast majority of young men are being handed to... They're being handed over to girlfriends with zero skills zero skills of looking after themselves competency the men have zero skills uh, the zero, men have zero, got zero skills. yeah zero, right. zero domestic skills zero skills of really of of what a man should really be um i mean to a large extent they've been mothered brought up by their mothers and their mothers are bringing them up to be nice respectable young men but that doesn't make them a good partner it doesn't make them a good a good competent partner who's going to look after protect take care of be respectful but above all be someone that she looks up to as opposed to having to mother yeah well i mean what i was going to say about this guy on the course was you remember him on the boot camp we were in that group of i think it was just the three of us actually yeah yeah and there was that other guy that was really um didn't want to do any of it very nervous oh he was just he was, his resistance was insane wasn't it yeah and he um mm. i'm pretty sure I might not remember this completely right. Maybe you can help me out. But the coach, her name was Minnie. Uh, mm. Like her a lot. She, she, she said, like, just go into that shop and speak to the shop assistant who was a woman. And I'm pretty sure he bought stuff. He came out oh, with a bag. God. Didn't well, I he? I think all she said, all she said to try and soft start him was go and pay her a compliment. Go and literally say, you know, I, I, I like your earrings. Or I, like that, I like that pendant. Or, you know, you've got, that's a great, that's a great skirt, okay? Mm. But, and that was, I mean, that's as soft as you can get in terms of approaching. But the problem is with stuff like that is unless you're going to progress it, you'll never move from there. All you'll ever do is, is walk around telling people how great they look. But I'm pretty sure he went in and bought stuff, didn't he? He probably did. He probably yeah. did. But he he was, his resistance was insane. And he, he, he flatly, and he knew it. He kind of, his insecurity said, well, I know better. And uh, and he wouldn't do it. He was just nervous. He didn't mean any of, of the stuff he was, he was saying. It, dumb, it's scary. It's scary as fuck. It's scary, yeah. I, mean, I, it I, I, I completely understand. It's, you know, I'd do anything not to do it. But in reality, I think the, the as I say, often with things like that, it's not necessarily the doing at the time. It's the, it's the drip, 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 drip. I think to a large extent, I'm digressing again, but I think we learn stuff when we sleep. We learn stuff when we, when we don't think we're learning it. And when you've, when you've been for an experience like that, then your body starts going, or your brain starts going through a rewiring process after it happens, where it's kind of, it's in, ingesting what it's done. It's thinking, no, actually, that skill I learned there, I like Krav. I mean, again, I don't walk around using Krav Magal, but you and I spent what, two, two days doing the course, mm. uh, and we learned a lot. But I'd be interested to know if I came into a situation that's confrontational or dangerous. No, in fact, I did, but we discussed that. I did on one of my building sites. And yeah. I put that stuff into action very quickly without any hesitation. I didn't even think about it. So you learn it, and then your body absorbs it, and it's there for you in future. Mm, quite right. All right, we'll do a part two of this. Okay. I've got to end it now. All right, All right. cheers, everyone. Join the Patreon. Take care. Thank See you. See you again. Bye-bye. All right.